in a very particular order. All right, in a very particular order. All right, there we go. So welcome everybody, another Friday night workshop. I'm so happy everybody's here. Welcome Yertsy. I've been calling you Yertsy and I've been hearing Susan call you Jersey. What Jersey. Would you, what would you prefer? Oh, it, it's been anglicized the Jersey. The actual pronunciation, if anybody wants to try their hand at Polish is Yezha. Sort of rounded measure. Yes. That's what my grandmother Yezha. called me. Okay, Yezha. cool. I like that. I mean, I like that it's fun to say. Um, so <laughs> let me do a second where I just share my screen and tell everybody where we're at and then we'll get started. I'm so I'm so happy. I've loved that setup you've got there with all those toys and the amazing, I think they're in for a real treat the way you screen share too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm very giddy. All right, share screen preview. Um, so welcome everybody. It's the Friday night workshops at Sequential Artists Workshop. We call it We Believe in Comics. By the way, this is also, we're archiving these on like on Spotify and other podcast um, apps. We've been doing that. So if you look for We Believe in Comics in your favorite podcast app, you may find it these days. We're a nonprofit um, school, if you haven't heard of us. Uh, we have lots of courses at learn.sawcomics.org. Um, what's happening soon? What's happening soon is Vanessa Davis will be here next week for a comic workshop she's calling Get Real. Also. Uh, Mel Gibson, Gil, Gibson, Mel Gilman's <laughs> Romance Comics is starting soon in November. I think it starts November 13th. Um, Week-long comics retreat happening in real life in Gainesville is happening um, on October 24th through the 28th. It's kind of stuff we do there. Um, most importantly, Wendy Peeney is going to be talking to us on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And I'll put a link to that in the chat. You can tell people... Um, this is a fundraiser, it only costs a few bucks to get in in the event, it's the, we'll give you an Eventbrite link and uh, that'll be on the homepage if it's not already by the end of the day. Um, and that will be in the chat as well. And we're really excited, like, I don't even know how that happened to be honest. <laughs> but Wendy Peeney, if you don't know, is a real just um, brilliant mind from who's been around forever and has done great things for the world. Um, okay. So please share it tonight on social media. The hashtag Friday Night Comics is what we use and there's a lot of great stuff on there. You can tag us at uh, Comics Workshop. Um, Jersey's email or hashtag is real easy. It's Jersey Drozd, right? Did I pronounce that right? Drozd, rhymes with hosed. <laughs> measure measure hosed. Anyway, <laughs> and I'll put that in the chat as well. You can also join us at members.sawcomics.org. Thanks for your donations. Thanks for your support. It really helps us do a lot of the things that we do. Um, keep it clean. PG-13 today, enjoy. Um, you're gonna hear from Jersey who's done some of these amazing things. And also you can see his Instagram is, like we said, Jersey Trost. I'll put that in the chat. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing. And yeah, thanks so much for being here. And you know what, you're, I'm so, old, not old school, I'm so old that your uh, workshop title, I don't know if I know that, you know, I don't know if I understand it right. It's put some O in your OC and I think that's original and original character. Okay, cool. That's right. That's right. I'm in the right place. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love it. Oh, well, welcome. I'm going to spotlight you. All right. Thanks, Tom. Uh, my gosh, thank you so much for letting me be here. I've been, a bit, like I was saying before we started recording, I'm a big fan of Tom's and have been for a long time and I'm just, it's a privilege to be anywhere near anything that he's working on and uh, the community that he's generated and assembled around him. Uh, so yes, my name is Jersey Droz. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist, which is to say a person who makes comic books and then teaches people how to make comic books, graphic novels, etc. Here's some of the things I've made. Here's a very out of date photo of me. Um, and if you want to learn more about everything I do, you can go to jdroz.com. That's where you'll find about, about my teaching work. I do podcasts about making comics. And then I also, you know, have a whole bunch of comics there. Next year, I have a book coming out from Iron Circus called Baron Von Baron, The Case of the Two-Faced Statue, which I describe as Indiana Jones in reverse. He's the guy in this little fantasy world. He's that little teddy bear. And he's the guy who, like, Perseus takes the Medusa head, stops the cracking. What do you do with the Medusa head? Now, I know in the original Greek mythology, it got put on Athena's shield. But let's just say, like, Perseus doesn't know what to do with it. He's going to put it in a closet. What if his kid finds it? So Baron Von Baron is the guy you take all that stuff to. So he's got the big warehouse at the end of Indiana Jones. They all get out. 
he goes out to get them back to only to find out they're not what he thought they were. So you can find out more about that at baronfonbear.com. The project I want to talk about the most, though, is something I just wrapped up 10 years ago called Captain Seriously and the Supermaster Sentinels, where I was hired by a school district in Michigan to create a comic book for each grade, grades K through 10, and it had to grow up with the kids. And one of the things that I discovered in this project is that writing for a kindergartner is a lot different than writing for an eighth grader. There's different expectations of the audience. And so I had to do a lot of digging into my own personal experience to figure out where I was at each of those ages to be able to write a story that was appropriate for what those kids were going through. And so that's what this workshop is all about, how to add extra O to your OC, how to write from life. It's one of those things that when I was first starting out as a cartoonist, I was like, what does that even mean, writing from your life? Well, it's, it's actually not as hard as it sounds, although we will be getting into some big emotions. And I, I have prepared options for us if we get into emotions that are too big. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to do a very brief warm-up, followed by three five-minute rounds of short writing. Very easy, prompt-driven. I'm not going to ask you to make up anything whole cloth. I'm just going to ask you some questions about your life. I don't want all the, the gory details. We're just going to write down a few words to like just trigger those sort of big feelings around these things that you've experienced throughout your life, whether you're you know 13 or 80. We're going to do one weird drawing activity. It's going to be very strange. Oh wait. Okay, yeah, no, I've got the th right thing on the screen. Yes, we're going to draw. We're going to draw something, and I'm going to ask you to really dig into some kind of abstract and sort of like treating lines like poetry. I, I like to think of lines and cartooning as visual poetry. We'll get into that in a little bit later. Followed by two random choice rounds. We're going to just choose some things at random. And then by the end, you will have the beginnings of a, a, char a brand new original character inspired by events from your life. So this is something that I have been uh, doing for a long time with that project I just showed you, that Captain Seriously project. Now, what are you going to need as far as materials go? I tried to keep this simple. Um, you're gonna need some kind of paper to draw on. Doesn't matter. Could be a notebook. Could be uh, you know a pad of you know yellow lined paper like this. Um, and then something that you can separate. So like if you have some note cards around nearby, it'd be a good idea to grab them or some sticky notes. I use a lot of sticky notes in my workshops. But if, if you don't have anything like this, you can take a sheet of paper and you can rip it into smaller pieces because we're going to be doing the, the random writing rounds or rather the, uh, the, write, the short writing rounds. It's better to have them all on individual pieces because there's going to be a randomness to it that we do at the very end. Okay, So like I said, pretty simple stuff. Either note cards, sticky notes. I'm going to be using sticky notes. You know, a little pad of paper or you know, just lots of sheets of paper if you have that nearby. Let's do our warm up real fast. Now, since we're going to be talking about digging into personal experience and getting into like our own heads and sort of spending some time there and thinking about how we feel about things, it'd be a good idea to dump out our brains, empty it out, like sort of relax our souls, as it were. And what we're going to do is uh, this is a this is what it looks like when we're done. This is a sort of um, meditative drawing activity. And now I've watched enough saw videos that I've seen that you have done some things like this before, um, but. The way I'm going to ask you to do it is, see, you can see that it's just like it's a mess. It's it's the the goal here is to try to draw something that doesn't represent anything. The same way that meditation, you're just letting the thoughts happen, and you say, "Yep, that thought happened. I'm going to let it go, and I'm just going to keep focusing on my breathing and so on." So the way I do this drawing warm up, and like I said, I I do it all the time in my sketchbook. I'm, I don't ask people to do things that I don't do. Um, is I'll just start drawing like you know some swooshes something that feels pleasant and the moment i see more than a couple happen like if three or more happen on the page i'm like up oh, time to change gears that thought happened now let's try drawing tiny all right draw tiny for a little bit now let's start swooshing with the side of the pencil should we start too uh, i'm gonna take a timer now let's all play along i'll put on some music in the background and let's all do meditative drawing Try drawing with your wrist, and then also draw with your arm. Thank you. 
I'm gonna draw some shapes. And that's our time. So round of applause for you for being so brave and playing along with this weird warm-up drawing activity. We should be loosened up now. So we'll get into what are going to be the prompts for writing. I said we're going to do some random, or not random, but um, some short writing prompts. So this first round that we're going to do, and we're going to have like about four or five minutes to do it, um, is I'm going to rip off a line from NPR and say this is called Not My Job. You're going to think of... Uh, jobs different kinds of jobs from your own perspective now i'm going to say that all of these sh you should try to treat them like real jobs like actual in real life jobs except for the crazy fantasy job so you got your dream job you know wh what you'd most love to be doing with your life a job you'd hate to have something that you would really not enjoy doing a job you'd be terrible at it's different than hating the job you might want the job but you know you would be terrible at it a job people respect boy mom would be proud of me if i got that job or a job people don't respect and then finally make up something ridiculous. So how about I put on some soft music in the background? And we'll just do like four or five minutes and I'll be glad to check in with you and see what you come up with. Here we go. And I'm gonna play along with you. Sticky notes. And try to write each of these on an individual piece of paper. All right, so there's my first one, my dream job. I'm already doing it. Job I'd hate to have. I would not want to do card dealing. Uh, job I'd be terrible at. I wouldn't want to have anything to do with money or banks. Notice, notice I'm not putting the prompt on these. I'm just putting the job. Oh, right. oh well. It's okay. It's okay if you did. Crazy fantasy job. I choose ghost doctor. And when you're done, you can line them all up in any order you want. I need that list back, please. Oh, I apologize. left it's okay if we don't finish them all just trying to start with as much material as we can
Fantasy job would be for Anthony Bourdain for a year. Just the eating part. <laughs> yeah, who wants to do all that writing and videography? Just eat the food. <laughs> okay, we're just about there. Got about 10 seconds left and we got to move on. And that's okay if you don't have them all done. Because like, as long as you got a few. Okay. Job to be terrible at. Yeah. So like I chose for mine a uh, blackjack dealer because um, uh, no, though, though, I said put CEO of a financial institution because it would have to do a lot with math and managing other people's money. And I'd be too scared of that. Um, yeah. Well, and yes, you could get into a lot of like weird areas. We start thinking about this a little bit. All right. So uh, now that we got our prompts, the next one, the next round, like I said, you know, we're three rounds of these writing. We're going to take another piece of paper under each of these, and we're going to try to think up a reason why somebody would take that job. Now, I, I know we're all, uh, the obvious choice is, well, because of the, the money, you know, they want to make money. Well, let's see if we can find something beyond that. Like, what's the next thought that occurs to you? Like, when I say, okay, well, they're a ghost doctor, why would they be a ghost doctor? And we're going to write down just a simple one-sentence reason Try to shoot from the hip. Try to just be spontaneous on this if you can. That's why I had you do that warm-up with meditative drawing. I'm going to set another song, and we're going to draw or write for about five minutes. See how many you can come up with. Ready, set, go. This doctor. Um... We've got about three minutes left. How are we all doing? Great. So some of these choices might like come across as like fairly straightforward and obvious. Like, okay, well, when I thought of blackjack dealer, I thought of casinos, so and I started thinking about mafia, family businesses, things like that. Not the most original thing in the entire world, but that's why they are separate because we're going to mix these things up. <laughs> All the Carter cartoonists I know are in the mob. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, there's a lot of mafia history in comics, isn't there? They're going back like a century. can't think of a job that people respect <laughs> every every job that somebody's gonna look down their nose at right so think about yourself what's a job that you don't respect what's a job that you'd catch yourself saying like oh not that oh, crossing guard for respect that's a good one 
but we're actually trying to use our personal assumptions to our advantage here. Like we have a lot of baggage around the way we see the world. Like one of the things that I participate in all the time are uh, group guided meditation exercises called circling. And the thing you discover when you do this is you are just constantly making up stories about everybody around you. And so this is just trying to tap into that. And we got about 60 seconds left. Search and rescue, that's good too. <laughs> David Lee Roth is an EMT. <laughs> That'd be the entertaining ride. <laughs> I want to hear him say clear <laughs> he holds the, the two electrode things over me. Okay. We all pretty much done. We only got one more writing thing to do and then we're gonna get to drawing. So how about we're going to move all these aside. Let's put all of our job titles in one pile and we're going to put the reasons in another pile because we're going to be doing some random selecting from those at the end. Okay. So gather all those up into two piles. You got one that's just the jobs, one that's just the reasons. Now we're going to get into writing from life. Now we're going to, this is where I'm going to throw out a little bit of a warning. These prompts are going to be digging into some possibly difficult experiences. And that's why there's lots of choices. I'm not going to make you commit to going into a purely negative realm in your personal biography. Um, you can stay in the positive places or you can go to the negative places as a place to fuel your creativity. But we're going to, once again, we're going to take some sticky notes or a separate piece of paper and we're going to write down the following. Um, the first names or just a word that makes you think of a personal hero. This is the only one that could be pretend. Personal hero can be a, a, a not real person, somebody you look up to, a dear friend or a best friend, least favorite relative. Oh my gosh, when Uncle Louie comes over and plays the trombone all night, he drives me nuts. Someone who annoys you for no reason. And then anybody who uh, plays around with Jungian psychology, this is what we call the shadow. Mm -hmm. And then someone who helped you when you needed it most. Okay, so I'll put up another four minute timer. Four minute 20 seconds. Do we put an example of one of those on separate? one for each and on a yep. separate piece of paper good question yes each of these should go on a separate sticky note note card or piece of paper and just just the name or some word that makes you think of them here we go four and a half minutes so, and thank you for put, put, uh, putting those prompts in the chat once again i will play along with you Excuse me, what was the last person? I can't read it. Oh, someone who helped you when you needed it most. Somebody came along at the right time. Thank you. You can access the, if you can access the chat, you can see it there too. Got about three minutes left. And it will come as a surprise to no one that I chose my personal hero, He-Man. Given the action figures behind me. Not because he's powerful, but because he's powerful enough to be kind. If you watch the cartoon, he never hurts anybody.
we have a minute and 53 seconds left. Is everybody done? I'm seeing a lot of people with pencils down. <laughs> so, hey, let's gather up those. Well, keep the names where you can see them. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the music because it'd be good to be ahead of schedule. Now, let's switch to drawing. Um, okay, now comes, I promised you a weird drawing activity, and here it comes. We're going to talk about how lines are like visual poetry. Real quick, um, the way I think about it is that lines can draw the visible and the invisible at the same time. Here's Charlie Brown. We all know this character. We've seen all the Dolly Madison commercials. And then, so this is a fact. Lines can describe facts, but then they could do this. Mm. And I say, what is this? And then we all say, he's frustrated, he's angry. Well, if a black cloud came out of your head when you got angry, we'd call the hospital, right? But that's inside. We can draw what's inside and the outside. So they're both literal and figurative at the same time. And, you know, like the difference between this line and this line is clear. So with that in mind, I'm going to ask you to, set, to think about, you're going to pick two of the names on your list, and you're going to try to draw a shape and a line that corresponds to whatever feelings occur to you when you think about that person. Okay, so you're going to pick two. That's we did five, so we can throw three three of them away. We don't have to use everything. So I mean, I can demo it real quick, but you can play along with me. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, John. He was he was like my best friend growing up. And when I think of him, he was a very supportive and kind friend but also he was like built like a frog he had the tiniest torso and the longest legs so i'm just gonna start by drawing a shape that kind of makes me think of like his profile but i'm also gonna use like smooth lines because he was so kind and supportive and keep it sloppy we're not trying to draw something that anybody's gonna put on any fridge we're just mm -hmm. like playing around right now um and i'm gonna think of mary joe mary joe was the person who came along and helped me no nope i take it back I want to get into a negative emotion. I'm going to think of Uncle Lou. <laughs> Uncle Lou, when I think of him, he's very stooping, and he's very, like, sort of mumble mumble. I think of like this really hunched over figure. So I'm going to draw, like, a shape that's, like, kind of hunched over. I'm going to do, like, a wobbly line on it. Because he's always mumbling. So try to do something like that. You're going to try to, like, think about, like, if, and I can demo them all. Like, Mary Jo, she was the person who helped me at the right time. She was a human fireworks display, so I'd do something that, an explosive shape like that. Um, Lauren was somebody that I knew a long time ago. She was my shadow. She was very performative and loud mouth, and she, she liked to cuss a lot. So I would do something that was similar to Mary Jo, but I would do something that was a little bit more shrill and nasty, and it's... And again, you don't know who Lauren is. It's not important you know who Lauren is. It's just important that I dig into that emotion so I can start drawing some shapes that make me think of these people or the shapes that correspond to the feelings I have around these people. How are we doing on time? Check my timeline here. Okay. So, once you got that done, you got a couple shapes. Now I'm going to try to turn them into something. So, matter of fact, I'm just going to I'm going to go ahead and erase for now these other ones. I'm going to start with this. And I'm going to treat this as like a sort of a pencil sketch. Let me lower the opacity on it or you could draw next to it. Um I'm going to say what do I see there? I'm going to turn it upside down around this is the same way we look for patterns in the sky we look at clouds but oh i see what it is now i'm seeing some kind of like weird lizard monster but i wanted to have like sort of that personality of my shuffling mumbling uncle lou oops If you can turn into a person, thing, anything, whatever you see there. But remember to try to tap into what was the feeling that you have about that person? Like what, what emotions do they have? What emotions do you feel about them? Lou is a very put upon dude.
<laughs> and let's take that Mary Jo firework display thing. I mean, there's a shape there, right? Well, what can I do with that shape? Can I build something off of it? Can it be part of, could it be like, sort of like a ceremonial sort of gown for somebody? That's something I see when I look at it. But no, you know what? I'm gonna make her a lizard lady too. Sort of like a some kind of like implacable sort of um not guru. What am I trying to think of? A, a, a shaman kind of character. I don't know why. That's just like something that's occurring to me as I'm drawing this. The act of moving your hand around often will activate that part of you that's creative. And that's why staring at a blank page doesn't do you any good. Just start making marks. Don't get too worked up about it. Because you can always erase it. You can always throw it away. So, here we got Lou the lizard. Oh, I didn't even think about the alliteration. I don't know what I'll call this character. And then the last step is I'm going to randomly select one of the jobs from this list and then randomly select one of the reasons. So I'm just go ahead and I'm going to do this completely randomly. Not looking, I'm not looking. Governor. All right, lose a governor. <laughs> this poor mumble mouth shuffling guy is is he he runs something. And why why does this guy run something? I'm gonna randomly select <laughs> because a beloved pet visited him as a ghost and asked for help. <laughs> So this is infused with my assumptions about things. It's infused with my, my feelings about things. And I can probably, because he's based on something from my own life, I can easily start to imagine what this character is going to do. Now, is Uncle Lou going to know that I based this character on him? Heck no. In that Captain Seriously project, I showed you that it's, it's full of people from my life, and then they'll never know. So let's see. let's do our random select on our characters, and then maybe we can do a little bit of sharing. <laughs> a stockbroker because stocks are cute. <laughs> when I make that cell in the spreadsheet green, it just makes my heart sing. <laughs> And then here's, here's the best part, buddy. You just take all your prompts when you're done and throw them in the trash. <laughs> nobody needs to see them, ever. Now you got something you made up from your heart. Amazing. This is so much fun. Oh, is it? I'm glad. <laughs> your Uncle Lou looks like a, a Dr. Seuss character. Yeah, now that I think about it, you're right. Yeah, he's got a little bit of that like like rubbery kind of and also that grinchy. like 60s. Yeah, a little grinchy too, you're right. So he became governor because the beloved pet visited him? Yep. Yeah, wow. the reason he became governor is beloved pet visited him and asked for help. So now I've got some prompts to start thinking about. Okay, so... Wow. Now he's the governor of a cat island, right? And the cats on the cat island need some kind of help in some way. Like there's some reason the ghost would ask him to go there. And now you can yes and and yes and and yes and. Do you have to stick with all these things? Of course not. But this is a way to get you sort of investigating, right? Cat island. 
You're picking, yes. Uh, so yeah, Jackie, you're picking random. Uh, you're picking randomly from your reasons that you wrote earlier. So you wrote all the jobs with all the reasons. You mix up each pile, and you grab. So like the beloved pet visited and asked for help was originally my reason for ghost doctor, which was a crazy made up job <laughs> that I came up with. <laughs> but now it's assigned to the sad Lou lizard governor of Cat Island. I mean, this is just first drafty kind of stuff. You always start out with like like a sort of a mess that you sift through. And the way I like to think about it is first draft is me having a time shifted conversation with my future self. I write out all this. I barf all this information onto the page. And then future me comes in and says, oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. And let's do this. Mm -hmm. Right. Griffin and Sabine, but with drafts. <laughs> Yeah, this is amazing. I got two just totally bonkers characters. Parking ticket cop because they get to make their ideas larger than themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie the Loudmouth Sea Serpent is hang gliding instructor because it makes great money. <laughs> the office mansplainer is the president because he loves e-bikes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You see how this could like, because you are assigning like a weird random reason, it gets you to investigate beyond your assumptions around that job. Right. That's part of the idea here. Has anybody got a drawing anywhere near where they can share it? Yeah. If you do raise your zoom hand and that'll be the best way for us to find you. And then we'll start spotlighting. Is that okay? Jersey? If I start. Oh yeah, I would love it. I, okay. I'm, I'm eager to see. Okay, so I'll let do that. And then what I'll do is I'll spotlight people as as we get them. So we have I saw Nina raise a real hand. Do you want to oh. Okay, there we go. There's the there's the zoom hand. So we'll go to Amy and Nina. And I'm gonna start spotlighting uh, Jersey here. Amy is there. Um, <laughs> so I have a teacher. Uh, <laughs> who became a teacher because she likes drawing blood. <laughs> and then wait, here's wait, the wait. CEO. She draws blood as a teacher. <laughs> now I gotta know what subjects she teaches. <laughs> and here's, here's a CEO who became a CEO because they're obsessed with cleanliness. <laughs> actually, that, that that actually fits very very well. It seems like really natural for a CEO to be uptight about <laughs> their spaces, right? Oh, that is great. Oh my gosh. And so is that like a, a heart octopus or is that like a heart? It with is a heart hair? octopus because it came from my friend Courtney who has just this like poof of bangs. And so that's the shape that I kind of associate with her. Oh my God. That's so great. How you arrived at that? Is, that is, th those are lovely designs. And I love all the personality of the CEOs <laughs> like striking the pose. It's almost like you want to hear a pata when he's doing that. <laughs> Everything's sparkly clean. <laughs> Amy. Awesome. Thank top you. notch. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll go to Nina next and then Michael. Okay. <laughs> so we have um, Myrna, evil stepmother, who is the executive <laughs> who got the mechanic job of fixing anything and as long as she gets the money. Um, <laughs> and then the psycho neighbor, Bobby, is a sex worker and he eats the best food and he got Anthony Bourdain's job. <laughs> and sex okay. worker was the least respect as as I saw it. Well, yeah, depending on who you're talking to, for sure. Jerry Falwell would say so. What, what, yeah. explain, explain to me the, the, the rationale behind the shape on the, the sex worker. Um, I just, the, the this neighbor is um, actually literally psycho and he lights his, um, our houses all night long and won't follow any rules for our neighborhood. And we all hate him. He honks his horn at everybody. Um, so he's jagged and, and, and he's, mm. he's bad energy. Um, yeah. We all wish he would leave. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I, I mean, I don't love that. I love yeah. the character, how you represented this feeling of anxiousness, irritation, discomfort as a pointy, jagged character, right? And this comes from right. like our lizard brains. Yeah. Uh, triangular shapes are dangerous and dynamic and for better or worse, right? 
So like I knew right away, I don't want to hug this character. Right? Oh no, you don't want to go <laughs> near him. And ironically, I pulled out sex worker for him. So wow. um, that'd be some yeah. scary, that'd be some scary, scary stuff. <laughs> Well, and yes, it leads to narrative surprises. Yeah. And yeah. also I like the idea of like this character on the left who can fix anything. Right. <laughs> and another thing that comes out of this is like characters can surprise us with being more capable than what we assume. We look at somebody, we make all these assumptions. Right. And what makes characters interesting and thrilling is when they surprise us. So like when I look at that character, I'm like, this is not a problem solver. Right. But this is a person who can fix anything. As long as it benefits her. <laughs> And, and they're an opportunist about it. <laughs> oh my gosh, Nina, I love it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. <laughs> okay, awesome. We're going to go to Michael next. Thanks, Nina. Okay. So I started with uh, the hero was Mr. Rogers and my best mm. friend. Bambi, who's this is kind of like a, a smile and uh, and a frown in one. Mm, mm. Mr. Rogers, I just thought of a, a smile and sneakers. Yeah. Uh, and so Mr. Rogers became Mr. Ribbit. <laughs> um, it was somehow just those, the sneakers just kind of looked like a frog to me. Oh um, my gosh. And uh, I can't read it backwards. But respected life coach addicted to the art of the game and uncertain outcomes. So, yeah, you want to talk about dealing with ambiguity, get into coaching and teaching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. And also, then, again, like the belying what you, you wouldn't expect that when you look at the pose. But, yes, please continue. Yeah. And then the, I don't know, there's something about the lines that made me think of you know, the worry, the anxiety, the, the, this is why we're best friends, because we're fatalistic and neurotic. And that reminded me of the way Tennessee Williams describes Planet of Bois as a moth. So that's how we got to the moth. Well, a professional gambler driven by desperation and tolerance for tedium. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this is a really great mashup of ideas. And I, what I also loved what I heard there, Michael, was how you, you started continuing to make associations. Right. That free association is how you arrive at like really original stuff. And it's, it's because of your associations, your personal tastes. So and can I just say, I also love how you got that. Um, what is it called? The asymmetry on your first figure that inspired Bambi um, with the smile and the frown at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of the things I love about cartooning is we can show simultaneity in a way that a lot of media can't. So that's really, really cool stuff. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. I love it. This is really, really fun. Oh, cool. I'm glad. Thanks, Michael. Go to Taysen next. There we go. Is this the Taysen that I know? Is this my friend Taysen? I think so. I don't know any other Taysens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's good. The to one see who's you. very excited for Baron von Baer, and you've uh, you've helped me with like I do some teaching with young kids a lot too, and you've been so awesome sending resources and teaching resources Aww. and things that have helped. So it makes a huge I'm difference. Glad. Thank you. But uh, yeah, this is awesome. This is such a fun <laughs> idea. So um, I was just doing it on my screen here. So we have um, Clive, who is uh, a sea serpent kind of teacher who became uh, very regal and, and noble and became a teacher because they want to find the rumored hidden treasure in the school, I suppose. So it's all just a ruse. Um, and then we had, uh, this is Vince, who is was my <laughs> least favorite uh <laughs> family member <laughs> and uh, it was I was the shapes kind of made me think of it was kind of like a slouching shape with some jagged edges made me think of a big mountain kind of thing so I turned him into a mountain but then the prompts <laughs> turned him into a pro athlete and the reason he became a pro athlete is because he can only communicate through showing and he can't speak um, so my I think that he's became an athlete to raise the funds to start uh, just to fund like his one man show that he wants to do to kind of <laughs> express himself one day but um yeah so those are those, those two and i love these things because like you would never you'd never just kind of think 
to make these characters out of nowhere. It's one of the reasons I love that, that that game you do with the with the shapes where you just draw a scribble game, right? Draw a random shape and then start adding words to it and, and thinking yeah. about it because you start making these characters you'd never, and drawing styles you'd never draw in. And it's mm-hmm. it's awesome. I love it. I, I'm already thinking of stories for these guys. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. No, what I love about your 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 sports character, just sports <laughs> on his head there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is like there you, you're describing a secret longing that the character mm-hmm. has too, which I think is really interesting. Is like, what can you make somebody who comes across as being crass or unpleasant or unkind, but deep down they really want something so badly, mm-hmm. and it's such a tender place in them. That's something that doesn't occur to us when we think about other people, especially like right now where we're really like kind of at each other's throats on pl- in places like Twitter. So can we? find that thing where it was like somebody is a tender child inside. Right. And that's what I was thinking of when you were describing this, this big thuggish character. So taste a, a million thumbs up. It, it makes me think of Vince in a new way too. The real Vince. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> okay. We're going to go to Ethan next and then Adam. Here we go. Ethan here. Oh, Ethan, I'm not hearing you. Yeah, you're not on mute, I don't think. There we go. Okay, well, I can see the character. So this is Servant of an... What does that say? I dig that you're drawing it on your phone, by the way. That's it's in the cool chat thing. now. Oh, Here's okay, cool. Oh, cool. Thank you. Servant of a Darsen, uh, Chechen Ice God? Oh, my God. <laughs> Those are words I didn't expect to say today. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And, like, I'm digging, like, the, again, asymmetry, imbalance, and oppose always makes them look 10% more like they're actually moving because we don't stand perfectly rigid. So, that's pretty cool. And then you got the iconography of the little heart coming out. So you're, you know, again, showing the inside on the outside of the body, which is something that's awesome that comics and cartooning does. So he worked up the ranks in the company to be the servant of the Chechen Ice God. <laughs> it's a dog eat dog world when you're working for the Chechen Ice God. <laughs> oh, Ethan, that is that is amazing. That is that is some real pure grade A creativity happening today. Thanks, Ethan. That's amazing. Okay, we're going to go to Adam and then Jackie. Here we go. I wish I could follow that. <laughs> Jeff and I, it's got excellent. Mine are so much plainer. <laughs> okay, so I have um, the one. My, my favorite is this one down here, who's a landlord because of a love of animals. <laughs> and then up here, we have a board game designer uh, because. He's a misfit, which oh, you know, wow. could work. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Board so. game designer is not like something that a 1950s dad would say to their child, right? <laughs> Someday, son, you're going to be a board game designer, right? right? <laughs> no, you're going to be an IBM salesman is what you're going to be. So, yes, I, I, I do <laughs> think that, that that tracks. But tell me about the shape that you use for the like that the landlord, because that is a really interesting sort of like very it's 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 rooted. It's like grounded. Yeah. So um, this is based on a former roommate I had who was kind of a, a drain on my energy <laughs> very often and was kind of just a couch potato, very just sort of uh, always kind of lazing around kind of guy. And he always kind of had a smirk like that, where like I was thinking of Butthead from Beavis and Butthead, where he's okay. just always kind of mildly amused by things that, you know. <laughs> more, more than he deserved to be. <laughs> more than, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I, landlord was an interesting pairing with that. <laughs> that yeah. I thought, mm. <laughs> yeah. And, and also, like landlord and love of animals are very like not <laughs> obvious connectors, right? I, so, I yeah. still haven't quite figured out what the uh, the story would be there, but some something. There's something. 
Yeah. 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 Th those are those both are infused with energy. So, Adam, yeah, I, I, I love it. And I love the shading that you included, too. Like, that's Thanks. sort of above and beyond. So. Thank you. Nicely done. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. We're going to go to Jackie and this funny. Let's see. There we go, Jackie. Um, so, <coughs> ignore those. Those are drawings from the other night. Um, so this is um, my step aunt Lynn, who is a horrible person and mm. um, just not a very nice lady and um, very wealthy, but like doesn't really do anything good with her money. And mm. I'm and she's a politician because she likes screwing people over to make lots of money. <laughs> it seems apt for yes. her. Even though it was rando, it was apt. Yes, it, 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 I, that is an amazing pairing considering that it was randomly done because it, it does it lends itself to the imagination very easily. Yes. And then this is my friend Lisa, and, and she was she's the tooth fairy because it's fun. <laughs> now I have to ask you, what would be fun about being the tooth fairy? In your mind. You, oh, you get to fly around. There's probably pixie dust involved. I mean, you got to deal with all these teeth, but uh, the rest of it is like, you're ma you know, magical. And Plus, and I, really I mean, I, I imagine you get a cut of whatever you're putting under somebody's pillow, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just about the teeth. That's right. But, but Lisa doesn't... Um, <laughs> She she's not like that as a person. She she would just enjoy the flying around part. Mm, mm. And and she also takes um, she one of the things she does is that she takes bones like she has animal skeletons. So she probably would dig the teeth part too. <laughs> I, I love the, the conflicting shapes too. I mean, this is like a UPA cartoon from like the mid fifties. The way you've got the design, <laughs> like I think I think of like so Rudy Toot too. Right? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it looks funny. so good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. That is awesome, Jackie. Awesome. Thank you, Jackie. We'll go to Shwani next and then Jules. All right, let's see if we can read these backwards. Um, oh, wow. This is Steve, who's a Zen master because he likes the sound of the scanner. I'm not quite sure what scanner it is. Um, so he's sweeping because uh, yeah. that's, that's what Zen masters do. And this is uh, Mimi, who... She's a surgeon because she can hold her breath. <laughs> I haven't figured out why you need to hold your breath in surgery. Well, but I there mean, we are. You, 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 would, you would spread germs a little less frequently if you could really hold your breath long enough, I suppose. But she doesn't need to wear a mask. But, yeah. yeah. I get, okay, so could you explain to me the shape that you did for the Zen master? Like what, what inspired that particular? Uh, like, the, this uh steve is a little prickly he's very cutting kind of sharp um and he's and he's been since he was a child tall and skinny um so there was like the tall and skinny but the jagged was the um and the and the pointy beak was really mm. the the um challenges mm. um, tom you did not tell me i'd be dealing with this level of sophistication in the students where it was in the it was in the brief. You must have skipped over it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's like really sophisticated understanding of shape language, right? You like you're you're fluent not only in reading shape language but communicating shape language. So that's really great. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I I dig like the sort of the poise of the Zen master too. Even he's got like like the, the the angly legs, but the straight poise and the focus in those eyes. Like I don't know. It, if you whether or not you intended it, take credit for it. Yes, I meant to do that. It looks really I, of good. Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Shivani, that, that that is terrific. I that, these are characters that I can begin to imagine narrative around. Mm. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Shivani. Okay, we'll go to Jules and then Vicky. Let's see. Hello. Okay. Hi. So all right. Um, so oh, I don't know how well you can see this guy, but because uh, it seems like my camera is a little blurry, but this one is L and I'm oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, they are based off of someone who was very kind to me. Um, and they're like a very powerful person. So that's why they're like really heavy in the shoulders. Uh, and I got garbage man. And because they 
like making things ordered and precise. So they've got their like cleaning the garbage can like very carefully and also have like a little dust pin. So they're like individually going to um, the trash cans in between. And then this one is tea. And, oh gosh. Uh, but um, they're from someone I do not like very much. And I got U.S. president because they love plants and animals. So they've got kind of like like old man face and like very red in the nose and ears. But they're also watering a little flower and uh, have a little squirrel on their back. Um, wow. Can, can I just say, Jules, the, the swagger you put on that uh, sanitation worker? It's so good. Like I could feel the movement on that, right? Thank you. Yeah, he's like he's like swinging through town like Gaston in uh, *Beauty and <laughs> the Beast*. It, it's really good. And Thank and you. also like that was a random pairing of the job and the reason sanitation worker because like likes things orderly. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Jules. Thank you. And Vicky, how's it going, Vicky? Hey there. So this is kind of dark. Um, I'll cover it up and this is the person that I dislike most in my family and I drew them as a bottle of beer um, and I put butt across the front of it so that you would know that it was beer and then the job that they ended up having was substitute teacher and the reason why they took that job is because they get to get stoned in the morning <laughs> listen to music watch squirrels and not have to talk to people too much. So it was wow. really dark. <laughs> wow. I loved, so, I loved the randomness of it. I loved just the pulling it together and it becoming this thing and, and how rushed it was. So thank you for that. <laughs> no, I mean, I just, I'm just excited to see the movie directed by Sarah Polly about this character <laughs> and their, their tragic life where they try to find meaning. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, Vicky, that's really great. I can't, it's, it's just sub bud. Uh, <laughs> so once again, that was a random pairing of substitute teacher and those reasons. That's yes. incredible. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for playing along and being so brave. Oh my gosh. Did yeah, everybody get to share? Yeah, that's the end of our hands. I'm going to put you back on spotlight. Unless Jamie Scandal, who we usually close out with is here, but I, I haven't heard from them yet. But yeah, we didn't tell you would be therapeutic either, did we? Or maybe you knew and we didn't know. Uh, it, does anybody feel different after doing this today? I, yeah, I think it was therapeutic. It was really interesting to like mix, like you said, it was like, it was more, it was personal, right? So these personal things come out and you get, they get to sort of play around in front of you on this, on the pieces of the paper. And they're not so like, they're not so raw anymore. And they're kind of like weird. And especially when it, when randomness comes in, they, they become more, well, they become funny, you know, and, and lighthearted and yeah. And people are saying definitely empowering. Let's see if anybody else said, you know, such a good warm up to use again. I barely recognize myself. <laughs> Somebody said, that, Luther. I mean, that's, that's my experience as well Is like my wife and I do a lot of these random sort of games with comics and I always wind up writing stuff that I would never write normally, like really like deep and dark stuff that I wouldn't allow myself access to because I'm a happy guy. I don't have bad feelings inside of me. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. And I like that people awesome. are talking about like looking at the negative experiences in their life in a different way yeah. too. I think that's an interesting thing as well. Wow. Jersey, thank you so much. This was really a blast. I'm going to put mine on Instagram. I'm going to, you're going to check out the hashtags, right? Because people, yep. will, people will show and it'll be really, really, really fun. Um, uh. I had a blast. Um, everybody, let's thank Jersey and, and um, come off mic and just give him a big thank you for this. This was really great. I can't believe we didn't see Jamie. Oh, Part of me is, is, it feels like we're not done, but, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Jersey. It was fun. It was awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, great idea. Mm. I'm holding Have a great weekend. Thank you. Where can we find your podcast? Oh, I'll put it in the chat. Leanintoart.com. I'll put it in there. If you like my voice. <laughs> and that screen setup, I'm amazed. I have no mm -hmm. idea how you do it. It's some sort of magic. 
<laughs> uh, just a free piece of software called OBS, Open Broadcast oh, oh uh, Software. Goodness. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, as always, for coming here. Um, check out Jersey's Instagram. Check out the podcast. Wendy Pini's coming on Monday, and um, that's a ticketed event. It's in the chat. It's on Episode Comics. You'll get an email. Anyway, thanks so much for everybody.